Worthy Pain by Richard Mars Din. Arjun Jag heard the building crackle of electricity before feeling pain lance across his spine. It didn't count. It was only a test strike to see if the whip was functioning. Punishment had not yet begun. One! cried out the voice of the commissar behind Jag, his tone laden with triumph. Again, Jag heard the electric buzz of the whip, felt its stinging heat a moment before it struck, and then the pain went spider-webbing across his flesh. Jag's teeth gritted and his eyes wailed with tears, but he did not cry out. Not yet. He told himself, Oh, how it hurt! Even after the whip's caress left him, it still burned. But it was still a good pain. A worthy pain. Only nineteen more to go. Jag rested his head against the metal pole and clenched his hands. He pulled slightly, feeling the canvas straps go taut about his secured arms, spread as they were upon the pole's crossbeam. Two! came the commissar's cry, and with the snapping buzz of the whip, as the burning agony tore across Jag's back, he pondered how exactly it was he ended up on the repenting rack. Jag tucked close to the low wall of some nameless town on the grassy world of Jendra. It was not his world, and the planet was alien to him, as alien as the orcs he was fighting. First off, unlike Krieg, Jendra IV, had a bright sun. Where Jag was born and lived most of his early life, the only light he knew was that of the ever-glowing artificial ones kept in the ceilings of Krieg's subterranean hives. The white rays were cold and ceaseless, unlike Jinder's sun, which not only provided warmth but also gave way to something else Krieg's underhives did not. Night the town was in a state of total disrepair, brought on by the orcs that had inhabited it. The low structures all bore marks of fire damage as well as the war wounds from small arms and explosives. Before Jag's regiment had reached the town of the Imperial Navy, had been kind enough to bombard it from above, and their fine work was evident. Orcs, however, as Jag's had learned, were sub stubborn creatures. They were not fearless. They would run. But not from something as impersonal as the few thesiline bombs dropped by navy marauders. The orders were simple enough. Simple enough for any soldier of the Death Corps. They were to sweep the town and kill the enemy to last. Sergeant Tarbova peered over the wall and adjusted his grey shell shaped helmet. Trained eyes scanned the debris-littered street and broken buildings along it. Seeing nothing, the veteran sergeant cautiously stood and began to plod in a hunched manner. Along the street, close to the safety of the shattered hab, Jag looked at the rest of their section. Normally it would have been ten men, each with an important task, to ensure the section fought at optimum strength. Little chance of that. Jack had been assigned to the section along with his companions, Gullum and Galen Rouse, just after completing the call eight weeks of brutal training, had him ready to be a man of Krieg, to earn redemption for their world, or so he thought. Jag knew he should have known better when he and his friends brought Tarbova's squad to a paltry eight, a clear sign that the call wouldn't, couldn't, truly prepare one for the rigors of war. Since Jack had joined Sergeant Tarbov's squad, he had learned the joys of space travel, poor rations, summer heat, and death. Orcs had come to the agricultural world of Jendra, and had laid siege to its only major city of Kienda. The Death Corps had stopped them, but losses were high and Talbova's already depleted squad was down yet another man. It was time for payback now. A breakout from the besieged city. 
but Jag felt their battered regiment was hardly up to the task. Grieg, the section voxman, left cover and scurried to keep up with the sergeant. For a man whose job was to talk and listen, he had hardly said a word to Jag and his companions. It was the only way of things, Jag noted. The elder soldier seemed hostile to the younger, almost fearful to learn anything more than their surnames. Lucifin. The stopgap went next. Medius of sort. Jag found the men to be quite morose. He had plucked shrapnel out of Jag's face and arm during the intense battle with the alien menace, then made a solemn prediction that he would die from his wounds. Jag did not find that exactly good bedside manners. As Lucifin made it to the side of the street, Jag ran next. He moved swiftly, for he wore only a charcoal-hued tunic with the sleeves rolled up, breeches and boots. He wore no storm coat, no chem-proof gloves, no rebreather. Not here on this world. To put guard behavior, Jag thought, as he clutched his lasgun and made his way to the fallen line behind Lucvin. Prepare men for toxic hell, and then send them to the agricultural paradise. Dimly, Jag had an amusing thought of somewhere in the galaxy. Karachan jungle warriors being disposed upon a frozen death world. Jag glanced behind him and saw Gulum make his way across the street. Of all the members of the fourth section, he was the slowest to cross. He had the task of holding ammo. Inglorious and vitally important. Cans of heavy stubber rounds were worn about his body, and he strained with an effort, kicking a shard of rock crate as he fell in line. Gulum had a blunt nose, and... From what Jag had learned from their time during the call, he had lived in less than the savory levels of Krieg. For someone born in such a squalor, he had of late a wholly self-righteous attitude and a desire to inflict his morality upon others. Gulam had chosen the divine route, much to Jag's annoyance. Jag much preferred killing Rouse attitude. Kellen Rouse was the only man of Krieg Jag knew that insisted on giving and being called by his given name. Something that on Jag's world was for close friends alone to use. During the call in the early war of Jendra, his attitude had remained upbeat. Be it good news or ill, he never frowned. Jag had asked him once how he did it, and the young man had confided in Jag by saying, I like it here. I choose this over staring at the logistic engine for the rest of my life. To which Jag meant Rouse was insane. But it was an easy insanity to deal with. Cheer the heavy stubber operator made his way across the street. Another veteran who only a few weeks prior had Coulomb's job of trending to the needs of the heavy weapon. He had been withdrawn as of late, and Jag did not fault him for it. The bond between Sheer and the man whose job he inherited had been a close one. Rouse was the last one to leave cover, and only a moment after Sheer did, better to cross quickly and together, rather than slowly one by one. To do that would just make any hiding sniper's life that much easier. While orcs were not known for their snipers, Jendra bore more threat than just the green variety, and had paid to be cautious. They formed a line and began to move forward. Elsewhere in the village, infantry elements of the 1st and 2nd platoon were doing the same. Three! shouted the commissar, and Jag's mind reeled for the torment. None of this would have happened if they had just bypassed the village. Alas, the orcs in the flanks had a tendency to multiply. Jag doubted the Imperial craft in orbit would lend their massive firepower to vaporizing the small community, thus saving him and his companions the trouble of clearing it. Four! It hurt. Hurt in a way Jag thought not possible. Jag did not cry out, though. He held it back. The Commissar wanted him to cry out, to scream, to wail, but such satisfaction 
would have to wait for. Five! God, bruh. Jack hissed through his clenched teeth and found himself already slumping in the arm restraints of the repenting rack. If only the Imperial Navy had been sporting enough to lend their awesome destruction to wipe away the nameless town, Jack thought. Just a single blast would have done it. it smells like orcs. Children. Taubova offered a weary smile to them before pressing on, picking his way along the street edge, eyeing each hole, each window. Children. He called Jag, Cullum, and Rouse that. Not in a paternal way, either. Having fought alongside the section, some amongst the surviving veterans had stopped using that term, but not the shallow-faced sergeant. Jag smelt burnt wood, tasted ash in the air, and could indeed smell orc. A musky scent, like dried meat or old sweat. Orcs were not the ones to hide, though. So either they had left the village, or more likely the Death Corps' foot sloggers had successfully snuck up upon them. Swallowing, Jag wiped his hand across his face, smearing grime upon his pale features. Each step the section took was far too noisy. They weren't masters of stealth, just gun bunnies, according to the Tarbova, who had yet to reveal what type of vicious animal a bunny was. We're going through the building this way. Tight quarters. Fix, the sergeant whispered, then affixed his black razor-sharp bayonet to lug beneath his lasgun muzzle. It threw off aim, but up close, aiming didn't matter. Jag and the rest did the same, save for the burdened Coulomb and the heavy stubber operator, Shear. Even the clicks of the blades fixing in place seemed as loud as artillery in Jag's ear. With care, they stepped into the open door of a hab and slipped into a world of shadows. With no electricity, none of the hab lights worked, and only daylight from the doorway and holes in the roof gave Jag any clear idea where they were. Taubova and the veterans could see well enough. They had served the Death Corps for a decade and had seen a hundred different suns. Not so for Jag. Krieg's underhive was always lit by a false light, and he was still adjusting to the myriad of light intensities of a planet with a true sun. Tabovas ducked through a doorway and knelt by a hole blasted through the habitant's wall. He surveyed the area quickly before looking back to the section and making hand gestures. The men all nodded, and Tabova went first. Jag next crawled through and rolled to the right, leaving his lasgun on the small side street, finding his arc a cover free of obvious foes. Jag whispered, Clear. Just as the sergeant did the same. Clear. The rest of the section made their way through, both Gollum and Sheer struggling. Gollum was unused to carrying the weight of the heavy stubbers. Food in Sheer's weapon was deadly, but ungainly and long. Not bad. Looks like we're doing this right. Tabover nodded, and then winced as he had tempted fate, and fate sure enough obliged. Gunfire rippled from down the street, and distinctly Jag could see tracer rounds spit out from a store and into a hab. Someone in the first platoon had not been successful in remaining stealthy. Should we go help them, Sergeant? Coulomb asked and indicated the growling firefight only a hundred meters away. No. Not our job. They'll handle it. Or they won't. Keep moving. We clear what's in front of us. Till told otherwise. To emphasize his order, Tabova jogged across the narrow street and pressed himself flat against a brick wall, then peered down an alleyway and beckoned. The rest of the section darted across the street, their sparse kit jingling as they ran, the boots slapping the pavement. Jag saw Coulomb wistfully look across the firefight, 
where men of Krieg faced alien ferocity. Come on! She has said, as he carted the heavy stubble across the small side street. Six! Somehow the whip-snapping end dragged along Jag's back rather than just striking it. Jag's threw his head back and he felt his neck muscle bulging, with the fell cry almost loosed from his lips. Seven! Jag opened his eyes and looked up, seeing blue sky. A few white clouds. They were nice clouds, much prettier than the acidic green fog of Krieg's red. Green fog of Krieg's. Strange, Jag thought, to think about the sky at a time like eight. Jag felt hot tears free themselves from his eyes, and he quickly shut them. Once more, Jag rested his sweating forehead against the cool metal of the repenting rack. The sergeant should have taken Colum up on his suggestion and assisted whoever it was that stumbled across the orcs. Orcs, Jag knew, were drawn to violence. The more violence, the more orcs. Down to the narrow alley, Jag peered over the shoulders of Sergeant Taubover, his voxman. Grieg, Luthskin, lingered back as the and as the section's stopgap, Medicus, was expected to stay somewhat out of danger, past the bobbing grey helms, Jag saw the shapes of beast pass by, heading towards the noise. Meanwhile, behind him, he heard and felt hot nerves of breaths of the rest of the section. Tabova increased his speed, not wanting to be caught fighting the orcs in such a narrow space. But luck did not hold out. While many orcs bypassed the alley, one abruptly turned down it. The creature was enormous, with green leathery skin, and clothing that consisted of bits of metal quite literally bolted onto its body. Additionally, flaps of dirty fabric fluttered from the thing's bulging limbs and broad torso. Its red glittering eyes widened in surprise as it found enemies quicker than expected. The beast bellowed revealing an oversized mouth laden with tusk and teeth. The orc managed to rise up a rusty cleaver in one hand and a ramshackle slug thrower in the other, sending off a series of heavy slugs as it did so. Sergeant Tabover threw himself prone instantly. Grieg knelt and fired his lasgun over Tabover's head, sending glittering darts of light into the orc. There was no missing at this range and in such small space. Jag brought his lasgun to bear and snapped off a few rounds, landing his fare into the fray. The orc staggered back as smoking holes were torn into its broad chest, and it seemed about to fall. When in true orc-like fashion, the alien flung itself forward in a final surge of hate and power. Alley bricks sundered and the orc swept with its cleaver, and fired off a flurry of slugs from its crude weapon. Ear-rattling sounds and dust filled the alley from the attack, and a breeze from shattered masonry forced Jag to turn away. The dust settled, and Jag looked behind him. The rest of the section was huddled low with the nervous expression on their faces. Jag looked ahead and gasped. The orc was laying face down, its body wedged in the alley, the alien's cleaver was buried in the pavement, just a breath away from the prone sergeant's head. Grieg adjusted his helmet and vox pack and looked around. Emperor protects. Did it miss us? Anyone hit? Talbova shouted, his words louder than they needed to be due to the deafening firefight. No, sergeant, no, sergeant. Came the uneven and surprised responses from the members of the Section 4. All right, then. Lucky us. We need to get out of here. Keep move. Tabover stood up, and his orders was cut short by another orc turned down the alley. Behind it, Jack could see several more of the Emperor's creatures. Of the more... More of the lumbering creatures. They've been drawn to the sound of the weapon's fire. 
The orcs let loose with the particular war cry they all seemed to roar before charging headlong into battle. Jag had learned to hate that sound in his few dealings with the orcs. Back, back, back! Talbova snapped, off two quick bursts of lasgun fire that lit up the alley. Grig stumbled into Jag, firing at the orcs in a panic. Jag wasn't able to see anything past Grig's vox pack and head, and filled with the rising dread that they were about to be brought down by orc slugs and axes, he made a split-second decision. Angranatin! No! The whole section screamed, but it was too late. The stick bomb was already in the air. Nine! The commas are called out as the lash struck with a crackling fury. Jag spasmed down from the blow and clenched his hands so tightly he could feel blood welling in his palms. Ten! Halfway there, trooper. Jag. Not even a little plea. Insolence doesn't suit you. Eleven! No pleas. No begging. Jag gave the commissar nothing. Though it took every ounce of inner will not to break down and beg for litency. Pride had its uses. Jag grimly noted in between the lances of fiery pain slashing from his back. It was a pride that put him on this rack. They ran out of the alley, falling on top of each other to escape of all things. Jag's grenade. Jag had thrown the stick bomb far and high, and the screams from some of his own section had even given the orcs pause as they looked up at the spiraling explosive. Sergeant Tabover was the last out of the alley. He was blasted out as the grenade exploded. Bricks vaporized and bits of metal spat out, bouncing off the walls and glancing off pavement. A cloud of dust coughed forth in the alleyway entrance, and into the street the section tumbled, coughing and sputtering. Jag's senses were reeling. He was alive, but his ears were ringing. He felt pain along his face and chest. He patted himself down and plucked out bits of rock from his arms and legs. With blurry vision, Jag looked at the rest of the section. Talbover was reaching to put his helmet back on. Grieg was laying on the street, gripping his wounded leg. The rest seemed to have avoided the blast thanks to the others absorbing it for them. Sergeant Talbover secured his helmet, but left the strap undone, letting the strap stay unattached could cause a thing to throttle you in rare cases. Such as when a fellow tossed a grenade in close quarters. The dust-coated man looked down the alley and walked over to Jag. Jag rose to his feet, but the force of over's punch knocked him right back down again. Why? We aren't dead is beyond me, you idiot! Anyone hit this time? Why you are still here is beyond me, Sergeant. Where are you going? said a new voice from behind them. Striding out of the hall in the hab they had so recently emerged from was a sinister figure clad in a heavy black storm coat. Despite the summer heat, a man hated as much as he was feared. Commissar Risen was everything people expected a commissar to be. Sergeant Taubover shook his head and glared at Jag before returning his grey eyes to the commander. Taubover was a veteran soldier. He knew how to best answer a commissar. Why? Forward, commissar, sir. We're going forward. I believe forward is that way. The political agent casually drew a sleek las pistol and gestured back down the alleyway. Yes, Commissar, sir. Must have gotten turned about, Commissar, sir. Jag, take the lead. Get to the other side of the alley. Have fun up front, Taubover said with a dry smile. Jag was still trying to get to his senses about him, and he stood and nodded, 
wearily before gazing at the alley from which dust still emerged. We should just go around. What? came the commissar's voice behind Jag. Jag was not an old soldier, but he learned quick. He was cast a look Rasen's way, and called out with as much false bravado as he could muster, For the Emperor! and flung himself down the alley. Jag's booted feet pounded broken pavement, and he nearly tripped over a half-pulverized brick. There were orc bodies stuffed in the alley, and Jag leapt onto... leapt to land atop one of the dead creatures. He fired a quick shot into the thing's head just to make sure it pressed on. Scaling over some other orcs, firing into their skulls as he went, the aliens had a tendency not to die even after seemingly fatal wounds. Headshots usually kept the orc dead. Usually. Jag moved down the alley with nervous steps. His skin still burned with shame. He had nearly got ten of them killed. Of all the people he did not want to fail, it was his fellow soldiers. They, and they alone, were the only family he or any men of Krieg had. The only ones he could ever trust. And he had nearly killed them with an act of panic. Even the section's most distant members were men whose trust he needed if he were to survive. Without their trust, Jag knew his life was in jeopardy. How could he count on them to guard over his back, to cover his advance, to watch him in his sleep, if he in turn could not do the same? Jag ran over to the shredded bodies and into the open street, which looked no different than the one he just ran. He had just been in. To his left, Jag saw the backs of distant orcs swarming towards the sound of gunfire. Jag looked right. While his heart beat faster and faster, it looked like the orc encampment. It looked like the orc encampment. Talbover leapt through the alley, hands clenched about his last gun. He shook his head at Jag and said, You're stupid, and your helmet has gone missing. The others exited one by one, and a tight ring of soldiers formed around the broken mouth of the alley. Most were glaring at Jag. Which way? Jag asked as he averted his eyes. We go right. Too many to the left. And so long as we aren't here when the Commissar comes through the alley, we're fine. After you, trooper. Talbova indicated to Jag and pointed towards the encampment. Twelve! The crack echoed out. Thirteen! Sweat bathed Jag and made his back sting even between the strokes of the electrified whip. He could no longer keep his teeth clenched and instead his mouth hung open and a line of spit fell from him. Fourteen! Jag arched and choked off what was almost a cry. Almost a whimpering plea for the pain to stop. Almost. But not quite. Shit. Take it. Orcs. He smirked to himself as drool dribbled down his sweaty, pale chest. Jag staggered ahead, still disoriented from the stick bomb. He moved forth and blinked his eyes rapidly, trying to clear away the dust. Ahead was a camp, and of orc make. Walls of debris had been hastily constructed, crew tents set up, fastened to the town's buildings. The street was coated in items, orcs disregarded for one reason or another. Bent tools, burnt wood, cracked stone, strips of fabric, dung. Lots of dung. Jag knelt by a piece of masonry which had fallen from a store and swept his lasgun left to right. He saw no movement besides a few bits of paper floating past. Jag looked back and waved the section ahead. Rapidly, they moved into cover, spraying out, spreading out not to make an easy target for something like a grenade. Sergeant Tarbova made a quick scan and darted forwards into the encampment. He paused and looked back. 
If we find something, get it quiet. Otherwise, the other end of the street is going to come back here. They like noise. Jag nodded, and he noted that through the orders were for everyone, Taubover was looking directly at him. Together they moved. From cover to cover, passing into the orc camp. Every breeze set Jag on edge, and he licked his dusty lips while placing a fingertip squarely on the trigger of his weapon. Remembering the sergeant's orders, he relaxed his digit. He couldn't afford to fail him again by shooting a stray sheet of paper. The sounds of battle echoed in the distance. It felt odd not rushing towards the sound of battle. But Sergeant Talbover was correct. Rushing into a storm of orcs was inevitable. Pick your fights right, the sergeant said often. Over here, sergeant. I have something. By the throne, came Coulomb's voice. Jack looked over and saw that Coulomb was standing in front of one of those tents. His body shock. His body stock still. Talbover rose cautiously and seeing that no orcs were about, gestured for the rest of the section to follow. When they reached the tent, Taubover peered in and winced. Lucifer, time to play doctor. Jag smelled urine, fecal matter, blood, and an unpleasant mix, to say the least. And when he peered in, he was struck by an even stronger stench of decay. The tent was dim, but... Within, he could see horrors. The orcs had set up a pen made from the hunks of metal and wood. Inside the cage, thin, dirt-caked humans squatted. Some were men, some women, some children, and all bore signs of abuse. The bottom of the cage was a mere human waste, and the dead bodies had been pushed unceremoniously to the far corners of the pen to rot. What is this? Jag asked aloud and grasped his weapon while Lucifer tucked into the tent. Slaves. The orcs use people as slaves. Don't feed them. Just use them. They must have been here for weeks. Tabover slung his weapon over his shoulder and moved to open up the pen. The people within shielded back. Dirty bodies, shuddering. Eyes wide with fear. Coulomb shook his head in disbelief. What did they eat? Drink? How do they live? He moved forward and raised his hands. We are here to help. You'll be fine. We're Imperial Guard. Men of Krieg. Come to liberate you. Coulomb spoke as if talking to a small child. The people within responded by nodding slowly. Probably were eating each other, drinking water they found pooling in the ground from when it rained. Tabover said and pointed to the holes in their tent, and then worked a metal door open. Lucefin produced his many bag and seemed hesitant to enter the cage of filth, but then stilled himself and stepped in, kneeling shortly. You're wounded. Bring them here. They did not talk, but they came forth, ushering shivering children towards Lucifin, who looked back at the rest of the assembled section. Don't think I... Tend to them, Lucifin, Taubova ordered, not letting Lucifin's usual permission shine through. However, even the most optimistic medicus would consider the most of them a lost cause. Gulam gasped, and stepped towards Jag. I've never seen anything like this. I've seen dead, you know. But not something like this. Jag had not either. He had seen civilians die and seen them dead, but never reduced to animals. He saw a monster, all bones crafting her comatose child before Lucifer. Tending's hands. Jag saw a man, someone who might have been his age. Perhaps he was once strong, but now was nothing but a burnt shell of a person. 
The man's face was a weeping sore, his body laden with flaring cuts. The sight of it seemed to touch Gulum's heart and Jag's mind. Jag did not feel pity. Jag felt something else. He felt hate. Jag turned his gaze to Sergeant Taubova. The camp has good cover. At its entrance, Sergeant. Let's set up and draw the orcs to us. Let's kill them. Taubova pursed his lips and looked to the men of his section. Then he sighed. Advice from you. Mm. Fine, Lusvin. Rouse, stay here with the people. Sheer, Gulam. Tabova reached a hand out of the... and shook the bleary-eyed soldier and called out, Gulam! Go help Sheer. I want to make the road unfriendly. Grieg and I will take the right flank. Jag, you hold left. Alone. Try not to shoot the Kamazar if he peeks his head through the alley. No more friendly fire, eh? Yes, Sergeant. They responded in unison. Fifteen. Quite the mess, your backies. Quite the mess. Must think yourself a real hero. Is this worth it? Jag was thinking it was not. He was having serious deep regrets. And yet, still did not shout out. He panted and thought back. The section moved smoothly. Jag tucked himself behind the same bit of masonry he had hidden behind when he had come upon the camp. In the distance, he could see orcs moving towards the distant sounds of combat. Shia and Gulum tore down hunks of the camp's fence and dragged it to the center of the road. Sheer propped the long back, heavy stubber atop the debris pile. It went prone, exposing little more of his haunted head. Gulum knelt by his gunner's side, opening up the crates of ammo and feeding a belt into the receiver of Sheer's weapon. Sergeant Taubova and his voxman, Grieg, took up positions on the opposite side of the street, crouching inside a blasted building. Normally, Jag felt fear before battle, a fear that he fought to control from the beginning to the end of the fight, at which point exhaustion set in. Not this time. This time he felt good and strong hate. He could handle killing. That was war. But the images of naked, shaking humanity suffered in a filthy cages it was too much for him. It was humanity's fate should they take a step back? Should they give way before the alien? Not only that. Jag still felt a self-loathing for his earlier failure. Let's get some attention. Keep in cover. Fire! Tabover bellowed out and sent off the first sizzling rounds across the open street into the backs of the distant orcs. Jag heard the satisfying sound of tearing fabric, which was the noise of the heavy stubber made as it sent out a burst of slugs. Not wild sweeping shots, but concentrated bursts, so that each orc hit felt it. Jag smiled and tucked his weapon tight across his shoulder. He even leveled the front to the back sight and held a breath. He saw the backs of the orcs turning to face him, their mouths open in the typical orc Chin. In their typical barbaric war cry, their pistols and cleavers raised. Jagged aimed for the nearest, sighting just below the orc's chin. Jag squeezed the trigger using just the tip of his finger. The orc staggered as a burst of blood sprouted from its lower lip. What Jag started, Sheer finished, and puffs of smoke riddled the orc's body as the heavy stubber gave forth a noisy burst. The orc fell dead, and more charged over it. Die! Jag screamed. It wasn't an original cry, but hardly. He couldn't think of anything else to say. He fired off a steady single shot, 
for each orc that staggered. Shear's heavy bottle finished. Heavy stubber finished it off. That was how the Death Corps infantry section worked. Troopers kept the enemy busy while the heavy stubber did the killing. An orc's face twisted from the impacts and the entire creature collapsed. Another charge forwards, blazing away with an oversized sidearm while whirling a chain over its head. Lancing shots to the right of Jag as he dashed into the orc's legs and sent it tumbling. Jag took a breath, aimed for the head, and fired. He was satisfied to see the thing still go on. The alien monsters were filthy yards away, and their weapons were sending out a reply to the unmineral section's fire. Slugs whistled past Jag, and he crouched behind the masonry, gritting his teeth as chunks of stone were blown off. Jag fired twice more, missing with both hurried shots, then fell completely behind cover to remove the spent power cell and produce another from his dirty tunic. When Jag reloaded and leaned across the cover to provide a small target as possible, many orcs were laying in the street in pools of blood. Many more were still coming at the section. Jag heard the steady short buzzsaw of Shear's heavy stubber and smiled lightly as he knew the orcs flung back from the shower of heavy stubber shells. Jag added to the fire, switching his weapon to full auto. Spears of red light leapt from the muzzle of his weapon and crashed into the mass of green. Some orcs fell, others hardly noted, and then the worst thing for the Imperial Guardsmen occurred. Hand-to-hand -hand combat. Ready, boys! Be ready! The sergeant managed to cry out. But by then, the orcs were atop them, and the old veterans called Chomp Range. I'm well trained at this sort of thing, trooper. I know that right now, about now, you should be screaming. Inside on your head, I know you are. But I'd like to hear it. Correction, the men need to hear it. So, for the sake of morale, would you mind? Sixteen! Jag almost obliged him. The strike sent him reeling into the metal pole hard enough that he bit his tongue. Blood mixed with drool running from his mouth. Through pain blinded his eyes, Jag could see both his wrists were bloody and raw from his jerking. He imagined that somehow his pain would have become manageable by now. He told himself that he had taken pretty well of blows before. What were a few more? However, as Jag heard the whip being drawn back and picking up speed, he let out a silent hiss of fear. The whip did not strike, but instead swirled faster and faster and gave Jag plenty of time to think. Three orcs were bearing down on him. One was more than a match for a human in the brutality of melee. Jag, thus normally, did his very best to avoid a nose-to-nose -nose fight. But as the creatures neared Jag, suddenly sprang out towards them. The nearest orc had clutched a hand axe and reared it back to deliver a stroke that would surely cleave Jag in two. Jag flung himself backwards into the hard street and jerked the trigger of his last gun. Cracking shots hammered into the orc as Jag emptied most of the power cell into it. The lumbering green creature sank into its armored knees, and before it could fall, the second orc had leapt over it with a single club held in both of its hands. Jag was on his back, heart racing and eyes wide. Eight had fueled him thus far. But his old friend's fear was back. With a grunt, he rolled to the side of the street next to his face. It exploded from the force of a club's impact. Jag lifted his last gun, but a heavy booted foot kicked it wide. With a guttural roar, the orc raised its club and then shuddered. 
Shears' heavy stubber peppered the orc in a quick burst, burying Jack time before the stubber moved on to the other targets. Not wishing to waste a moment, Jack rolled to his knees and thrust out his weapon. The blade of the bayonet bit through the hide into the flesh. Not enough to kill the orc, and so Jag screamed and pulled the trigger of his weapon. The recoil of the shot sent Jag back on the ground again, and in a gout of the orc blood, his bayonet was worked free. Jag didn't have time to see the alien fall, for the third had reached him, and with what Jag almost took for a grin on his face, the thing leapt. The creature brought a bear its giant clubbed together pistol, and Jag's eyes widened. But true to orc form, it tried to use its pistol as a club rather than a firearm. Blood burst from Jag's nose as the orc bashed him. His vision returned to see the orc straddled atop him, bellowing in pure delight. The orc raised its pistol to smash Jag's head into pulp. No shots from Sheer came this time. Jag saw his last gun at his side. He must have dropped it when the orc landed on top of him. He reached a dirty hand over to it and brought it up to the barrel, swinging it with all his might onto the orc's head. The orc dropped its pistol and grabbed Jag's last gun and tossed it aside. The blood enraged creature locked its fists together and drew back to smash the puny human beneath it. In desperation, Jag reached out and grasped the orc's discarded weapon. Jag hefted the unwieldy orc pistol into his hand and fired. The kick snapped his wrist back, sprinting it, and the slug passed through the orc's head and out the other side. Blood vomited forth from the beast, and its red eyes went dull before it landed fully atop Jag, pinning him. The sounds of gunfire ceased and the battle ended. Jag struggled without much luck to get out from under the dead mass of green, and it took help from Gulen and Sergeant Taubover to haul himself free. Jag's wrist burned, and he rubbed it before picking up his discarded lasgun. Green bodies twitched in the street, and Grieg delivered shots to their skulls. Sheer was keeping his weapon trained on the road, just in case. But as far as Jack could tell, they had won, and suffered little for it. The Emperor protects, he said to himself. Thrice that day, they should have all died, and thrice they had been spared. When Kamazar Raisin emerged, last pistol in hand, Jag stood at attention. Ah, that's more like it, Sergeant. Cleared out their camp, I see, the Kamazar said. The Sergeant was an old soldier for sure and replied, Yes, Kamazar, sir. Drove them from their own nest and shot them dead. We have rescued civilians, sir, in the tent. Mm. Was the Kamazar's only reply, followed by, Show me. Seventeen! Raisin cried, but the whip's buzzing strike nearly sent Jag unconscious. Things would have gone much easier if I had. And Jag dimly noticed he was not standing at all, but instead hanging limply from the blood drenched bonds about his wrist. As before, the Kamazar took his time, winding his whip back, letting Jag contemplate the origins of his misery. Into the stench-filled tent, Tabuva and the rest led the commissar. The tall man sneered at what his eyes took in, and he dusted his storm coat off, as if the mere presence of the quaking people was somehow unclean. Raisin shook his head and looked squarely at Sergeant Tabuva. Traitors! Agents of the orc sympathizers! Baggage! Stop wasting our medical care on them, Sergeant! We have a war to win, and it can't be won with collaborators in our midst. These people should have died for their emperor. Instead, they aided the enemy. I want them shot. Then you and your section press on. Understood? 
The sergeant paused and swallowed, but he was an older soldier. Understood. He licked his lips and added, Come as our sir. Good, Raisin said. With another look of disgust, the commissar departed. I'll do it. Get out of here, all of you, Tabova said, and lowered the brim of his helmet to shield his eyes and glance at the people who cowered in their cages. No, you can't, Sergeant! Golem stepped forth and put himself between the people and the rest of the section. Throne's sake! No way, Sergeant. Throne's sick. No way, Sergeant. Sheer interjected. Sergeant, Luthien asked in Clugius. You think I like it? But the commissar is outside. We don't do it. He will. Tabover growled and has jerked his head. This. Isn't the first time I've had an order I'm not fond of. Won't be the last either. Now go! Sergeant, this is wrong. Let them go! Just let them go! Gulam pleaded. It's my hide if I do that. And I quite like it. Gulam, get out of here. All of you, now! Wait, Jag said. He saw a chance to redeem himself and added. I'll do it, Sergeant. You're sick, Jag. Nearly killing us not enough. Need more blood? The sergeant said and shook his head. No. I mean, I'll be my hide. I'll let them go. I'll take the blame for this. They escaped on my watch. Go distract the commissar and I'll do it. Taubover pondered a few tense moments, then shook his head, as if already regretting his choice, and said, it's your back. Do it. The section stared at Jag, and one by one they departed the tent, a few offering him nods of silent approval. Jag waited until the section left before smiling at the people who whimpered in their cell. Actually, I'm doing this because I slipped up with a grenade. Gotta kill us all. But they don't need to know that. You win. I win. Out through the bottom of the tent you go. Hide. Now. He fired into the air a few times to get them scurrying, and then went outside to report his failure to his sergeant, who in turn had to tell Raisin. The commissar was less than pleased. Eighteen. It was beyond pain. Nineteen. Does your failure to properly carry out an order deserve a little shout? A little cry? The commissar taunted. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jack broke down. He was sorry. He nearly got his own men and himself killed. The pain hurt, but it was worth it. It was a worthy pain. For an act that could have ended them. But they didn't need to know that. Jag was fast becoming an old soldier. Let them all think him a savior and let his penance be a private one. Let them never know he was really... Let them never know that he was really was a hard bastard. And let the Kamazar think he was repentant for his failure to shoot civilians. Apology accepted. Twenty! Alrighty, that's gonna be a quick little fan story for Krieg. I can't really find that much stuff for, um... Krieg, but uh, I'm just going to imagine in my four brains, the four hemispheres of my brain, that this was, um, these were not actual Krieg, but these were civilians that were 
introduced into the Krieg army itself. Because, um... They actually have names. And... They were just brainwashed to believe that they were from Krieg, so that we... They would fight harder and better than they normally would have. That's my uh, head cannon for this story, because otherwise, it makes no frickin' sense. It makes no gosh darn sense why these Krieg people have names. Maybe besides, it was maybe it's just the author of this fan fiction that just decided to go. You know what? I'm gonna give them all names. I don't know why, but each and every one of them has a name. I mean, you could have just shortened it to uh, 226 or 557. Instead of having a full 19 number serial code that they all normally have. Just give them names like that. Just 226 or 666. Or even 777. And just nickname them to sevens. You know, like how they did in the Clone Wars. You could even have fives in there. <laughs> Uh, anyways, let us say thank you to our ongoing Patreon support members of the channel. Without them, I honestly wouldn't have come back at all. I genuinely wouldn't have uh, made another YouTube video for a whole month. Because, um... Life is busy, a lot of stuff is getting in the way, and, um... Yeah, anyways. Let us say thank you to Mr. Crossman123, Cocoa, Zach Hello Coffee, Meltdown480, Bortus Unum, Nicholas Gurr, Lilac NPC, Starboard, Thompson235, Azuth89, Joss Sickles, and Angelo Nicholas. Thank you all for being ongoing Patreon support members to the channel. I hope you are doing absolutely wonderful today. I think I might have uh, missed someone. Let me just. Uh, uh, ah! Um. Eldric Maldred. Yes. I almost forgot your name. Uh. Some stuff goes screwy sometimes with Patreon. Um. I also have a new members thing for a YouTube channel. I don't really know what that's gonna do. It's honestly set at the same price I already have for Patreon. So if you can't do Patreon, I also have that. So. It's honestly going to be the same tier system as what you have on Patreon. It's just if you can't do that one, they have the YouTube member thingamabob, whatever it is. If you can't do one, you could do the other if you feel like it. Honestly, only if you really, really feel like it. Because at the moment, I don't get many notifications from YouTube about uh, the YouTube channel itself, except for stuff that I'm actually subscribed to, which is... Uh, a little annoying. And I will be doing a battle report at some point in time soon. Haven't done one of those in a long, long time, but this is going to be uh, a fully edited story. It's going to be a full-on narrative that I've been thinking of while daydreaming at work, while, uh, doing work still just turn my brain off and think about something else while the rest of my body just does the standard job that I need to do <laughs> all I'm doing is pulling boxes from a truck so honestly I could turn my brain off back there it's fine <laughs> I get bruised up from doing that but you know what it's fine <laughs> All right, I hope you enjoyed this story. A uh, actual Krieg story is coming up soon after Kaifus Kane. I got, um, thanks to Major Kill, ruined for what's coming up in Choose Your Enemies, or, um, uh, not Choose Your Enemies, it's the, uh, The Greater Good on Fecundia. I did not know what regiment of guard they were fighting with until he spouted with his fat lips, saying, Oh, it's this army, the one you just read a story about. In the middle of doing this, while editing, I had that playing in the background and just barely listened, because I wanted some background noise. 
and uh I just heard Krieger fighting alongside Kaifus Kane in town. I was like, Mother! You just ruined the story for me! Anyways. Um. Apparently, thanks to Chapter Master Valric, he's saying that the Emperor is healing. I don't quite get that. It's not grim dark enough for me. The Emperor is not healing. He's actually slowly decaying. There is no progress in 40k. Everything is going backwards. <laughs> oh, whatever. It is what it is. You believe what you want to believe. 40k is subjective truth. Every narrative is a fake one. Every uh, story is not real or is real. It's told secondhand, thirdhand, or fourthhand. Maybe it is told from generational stories. Passed down from one family to another. Who knows what is truth and what is a lie? Who knows what's exaggerated and what isn't? Maybe the Night Lords actually aren't blood-crazed lunatics. Maybe they are still loyal in some way and form. Or maybe they are insane, bloodthirsty madmen. To a point that even will make a corn berserker blush. Maybe the Seleneshi followers are cheeked up and can't sneak around because of the clap of their ass cheeks alert all the Imperial warriors. Maybe the Iron Warriors aren't actually Iron Within and Iron Without. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe the Imperial Fist don't actually fist their enemies. <gasps> Blasphemy, I know! <laughs> Maybe they use thunder hammers instead. What type of sorcery is this? <laughs> okay. That's it for me. A uh, quick edit for this. I'm not going to add any effects or anything. If you do hear anything, it's honestly just afterthought. Or I thought, you know what, I might as well. If you don't hear any music or after sound effects or anything like that, it's because I wasn't really interested in this story, honestly. It's fan fiction, and um, that should be enough about that. Alright, see you in the next story, which is um, going to be Kaifus Kane. Choose your enemies. Alright, have yourselves a good one. Stay safe out there. Try not to get too hurt if you are uh, doing anything today. Stay safe out there. Have yourselves a good one. Goodbye.